Hello. <laughs> Rasmus? Yes, GM. Yes. Is that how I pronounce your name, Rasmus? Yeah, that's uh, that's correct. Wonderful. How are yeah. you? I'm good. How are you? I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm great. Thank you very much. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. So, so you're uh, recording this, aren't you? So I don't sorry. have to bother. You're recording this? I'm recording. I'm recording. I will, I will send everything later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Like I wish, yeah, I'm just curious. And first of all, I'm kind of curious, like what the bleep are you doing in Sweden? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, let me just turn up the, the volume here a little bit. Something wrong with my, I, I've just got a Linux. Oh, okay. okay. The volume in these things are quite different. And worse. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's better. What the bleep am I doing in Sweden? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been here before. That's yeah. really, uh, I haven't been here before. And I, um, I, by one of my students offered me a trip over here. Uh huh. And that's it. Here I am and here I stay. That was over a year ago now. So, oh, really? Yeah. That's cool. You're and from you here, aren't you? You're from Sweden. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm from Sweden. I'm from, um, well, born in Stockholm, but grown up a bit, uh, a bit north. Uh, but then Stockholm a lot of my life. Uh, a bit How far around. north? Uh, Ockersberger. Uh, between Uppsala and Jävle, it's a small city called Tierp. I know it. I know Jävle. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh really? Yeah, I stayed there a while ago. Yeah. Oh yeah. cool, cool, cool. Yeah, there will be a lot of uh, TRP uh, people uh, watching this uh, later on. So it's. Uh... Oh okay, lovely. <laughs> no, I'm because. In... I'm, I'm... I'm I'm curious because well I'm in uh, Chiang Mai, northern Thailand. I don't know if you are familiar with northern Thailand, uh, but about the topic we're about to speak about, uh, a sort of this area here initiated uh, a lot of my spiritual uh, journey, and uh, I met a girl from China actually uh, about a year ago, uh, and she was going to Sweden, <laughs> so, south of Sweden to uh be closer to her spiritual teacher and I, i'm like a little bit blown away like what are these spiritual people coming to sweden because <laughs> <laughs> in my experience is one of the sort of least uh spiritual places on earth almost and like you, you can almost find research on this right so just curious i'm uh, i'm slowly learning that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a painful process i guess yeah yeah no, i i love it here i really do i am it's um oh look i'm at uh Ustra. you know Ustra. yeah 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 the archipelago right yeah yeah that's where i am it's uh oh still, wow that's awesome still some snow you know uh you know back in my early 20s i used to be a tour guide in the archipelago actually oh okay yeah, so I, I was right in those uh areas and i had like uh uh, relatives uh, with the cabin out there so yeah i'm quite familiar spent a lot of my summers out there yeah you've probably gone past this house where i am now yeah so. there's a lot of uh, a lot of famous sort of uh, authors and uh po po yeah, old old poetricians or you call it uh lived out the market painters and yeah poetists and yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'm slowly starting to bump into them so oh, yeah. let me throw let me throw your question back at you. What the bleep uh -huh. is a Swede doing over there? Well, um, good question. Also, um, yeah, I guess I'm a little bit of a black sheep in, in a way. I, I started to travel quite early, um, right after high school. I backpacked uh, on my own uh, over to, uh, well, a few days here or in Malaysia, but mainly towards Australia. I backpacked in Australia. And then back to Malaysia uh, a few days. And that's when I got the first sort of touch of Southeast Asia. And after that, I sort of I had this idea of running hotels <laughs> close to a beach in a, in a sunny country. So a few years later, I actually went to Cambodia and opened up uh, hotels with some friends. And, and so I just had this thing about Southeast Asia. So I knew I, I want to come back and Buddhism and all this have been a long standing sort of curiosity for me. So mm -hmm. it's um, your turn, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. And especially here in Chiang Mai, it's I don't know if have you been in Chiang Mai? No. No, oh, it's a it's a beautiful, beautiful city. It's the second largest city in Thailand. Tons of temples and 
uh, mm. Vipassana retreats. Uh, I sent the link to to your staff there. Uh, I went on a two week Vipassana uh, journey a few few weeks ago. A lot of good uh, stuff. Uh, a lot of good stuff there. Um, monk, well renowned monk around here, uh, got um, got prize both in Thai and Myanmar for being influential in Vipassana and stuff like that. So very uh, intense Vipassana technique. Four a.m. wake up. Uh, until 10 p.m. Uh, yes. <laughs> Being there, then, done. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to, I wanted to get into all that actually. So, um, but just to get people into your sort of story, uh, there's a lot, few points I want to get into. So, you're kind of born. You're born in Scotland, then went to Australia. Yeah, ended you're up young. in Australia. Yeah, yeah. Born yeah. in Scotland, but also lived before Australia. I was in. Um, <clears throat> the UK and uh -huh. Northern England and then South Africa. Oh, South Africa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. I'm going back a long time now, 30, 40 years now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, South Africa, India, uh, oh, wow. Las Palmas, a few different and, places. And this was, this was really early, like early childhood. Oh, this is back in the sixties, 1960s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> a few years ahead of me. A few years ahead of me, maybe. Ah, <laughs> uh, look, I, I would, I would recommend that you look forward to it because once yeah. you get past fifty and sixty, life's really cool. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. looking forward. To it. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's starting to be pretty cool uh, now. Uh, but but yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, but so what I've heard, like I, I I saw you and your conversation with the guy called Chad. That's how I sort of. Discovery. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's uh, interesting. And, and talked a little bit about your sort of difficult upbringing, and then you got into sort of martial arts in, in Australia. And, and I want to dig a bit deeper into that. So at some point, you met the masters that said it was all about the mind. Uh, and, and that was early for you. So I kind of want to hear more about your early stage of, of sort of spirituality and mind work, or what you would call it. Okay. It's not that a lot to tell, actually. Um, by the time I was seven, maybe nine years old, I was having memories that weren't mine because it, the memories were, um, how could I put this? My place in the memories was as an adult. So I was having adult memories as a seven or a nine year old. And uh, that kind of um, took me out of the mainstream mm. childhood. Um, what did you What did you make of them at that point? You remember? I was just, I, I was just fascinated. I, um, right. I I think there was I was born with something wrong with me because I don't <laughs> I don't nothing scares me. Mm. I've never had fear. I've never really known fear or anger. Those things aren't right. in me. I was told that I probably got rid of those in a previous life, those mm -hmm. um, issues, weaknesses, mm -hmm. however mm -hmm. you want to see it. Um, not being scared of anything isn't a boast. It, it can be not good. Uh, you can do some stupid things where fear would have normally kept you away from them. Uh -huh. um, but to answer your question directly, uh, absolute fascination mm. to the point where I wasn't interested in school or mm. anything, any other kind of teachings. I mm. needed to know where these oh, really? thoughts were coming from. And that mm. was the beginning. And, and so that was early, like seven, eight years old-ish? Yeah, oh. yeah, mid-60s. Mm. And did you have any teacher at that point? Anyone that could guide you? No. So no, how, how, do, how do you go about it? Books. I used to, um, instead of, I used to get up in the morning, put on my school clothes, throw my school bag over my shoulder uh, and purposefully miss the school bus. Uh -huh. And then I would catch a different bus and go into the city and spend the whole day in the library looking into uh -huh. um, occult books, mystical books. Uh -huh. I didn't know the difference between occultism and mysticism and religion. I, I was only nine or 10 years old. Um, 
but I was drawn to that and I started reading occult books. At that age, when you start having paranormal experiences, you immediately start reading books about werewolves and vampires and mm -hmm. all of that sort of stuff. Um, so that's kind of where I started. And then very yeah. quickly, I started to discover deeper and more meaningful things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and that was it, really. But uh, the martial arts kind of played into it as well because mm. my first martial arts was Kung Fu. Yeah. And my first martial art teacher was a Chinaman who could hardly speak English but uh -huh. did well enough. Um, and there is, I guess, what you could call paranormal elements to that as well. The, the yeah. martial art, the kung fu I was training in was um, monastic kung fu. So uh -huh. it's very, very mind based, high martial arts. Yeah. And it pointed out being in the moment and absolute awareness, uh -huh. still, stilling the mind. So, with that going on in the background, and I was doing that because yeah. of the abuse as a child. So, that uh -huh. was a whole different ballgame. Uh -huh. Um, but unbeknownst to me at the time, I was developing my stillness, developing my inner strength, my focus, my awareness, mm. my ability to remain in the moment. Mm. Um, and when I wasn't doing that, I was studying mind. Mm. Also, at the time, I didn't realize that mind is what I was studying. Mm. In the books? Uh, in the books, yeah. yeah so yeah. by the time I'd reached 13 or 14, I was um, nothing in my life was answering any questions anymore uh, so I need, I need to find people yeah so my kung fu teacher introduced me to his father and his mm. father at that time was very old he'd been working for the chinese tong for many years mm -hmm. <clears throat> as a as a hit man believe it or not mm. um when he left the tong they took his face off as a payment normally they would kill you you don't leave any kind of mafia uh, but he wanted, he wanted to leave the mafia so they took his face off with acid and he uh, ended up with this one little eye hole that he could see through and mm. it was through that little eye hole that he taught me so this old guy with no face and one tiny little hole to see through um, taught me for a long time extremely intelligent extremely wise old man uh, after a little while, we got to a point yeah. where he said to me, you're broken internally. Um, you yeah. have to go and get spirit fixed. Mm. And something deep inside me went, yay. <laughs> that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Yeah. So that was it. And I ended mm. up in um, Tibet. Mm. So, and this was still early uh, teenage years. So so in, in, in Australia, I guess. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, what what did he teach you then? Like, what in terms of your understanding at that point, in comparison to what you understand now, in like how, how far along were you? Would you say he pointed out and confirmed to me that I am not my thoughts. Mm. I am not what I am aware of. I am awareness, and the thing for mm. me to do is to start negating all the things that I'm aware of until I eventually mm. arrive at awareness. Mm. The main thing I got from him, he taught me that I was mind. Okay. Uh, what is that? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> and what is that? <laughs> what is oh, the mind? <laughs> mind? What is mind? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a um... mind. It... Yeah. The only way I can answer that question is to point out semantics. If you break the entire universe down to two things, there is matter and there is an animating force in that matter. Mm. The animating force that animates everything, you can call it life or you can call mm. it mind. Mm. So in this particular case, I'm calling it mine. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did a very interesting, uh, and I, I want to sort of finish with that, but you did an interesting two-minute meditation, I think it was with Chad. Uh, yeah, we were just like, take a step back. And, and, I, and I did that as I listened to it. And I think that almost 
got me to some some weird place very fast because I could like wow this is really fast observe um yeah, myself yeah. From, from a blackness like yeah it's interesting that's my objective in life in this field is to show people and point out and demonstrate that anyone can reach the highest state of mind mm. it's, it's mm. already in everyone if it yeah. wasn't if it wasn't you wouldn't be aware of me sitting here yeah. so it's easy, to, it's easy to do people that try and string these teachings out for years mm. and on end are um earning a living from you yeah yeah um in this day and age it doesn't need to be mystical and mm. by mystical I, I mean it doesn't need to be a mystery anymore no, no. because we're we're far more intelligent we have mm. so much technology now that we can quantify and measure these things with mm. you know i think i said this or oh, some other interview many many years ago mm. thousands of years ago the weather was a mysterious thing only mm. only to be known by the gods mm. but of course these days by the time you're 10 mm. years old you've already learned about the weather you know what rain is you know how yeah. it gets from the ocean to the sky and comes back at you know yeah. what a mystery and to me this is what i'm trying to do with mysticism and enlightenment and the powers of the mind Mm. bring it back into a state or a situation mm. where everyone can understand it everyone mm. can reach it everyone mm. can live from mm. it mm. and if that occurs you would have a wonderful world to live in mm. Mm. yeah because i've been i'm very much of a <clears throat> i like all different types of topics and i studied some international relations uh, a few years ago in sweden uh very interested about the macro picture of the world, how, how the world is behaving right now. And uh, my friend, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. My friend going to Sweden, seeking a spiritual teacher, uh, you being there, and I'm I'm moving away from there. And there's all these things going on in Europe and in America, and like just a lot of energies I feel like going around. And um, have I have a like I'm fairly new in this spiritual uh, journey, but I have a lot of uh, spiritual friends that talk a lot about energy, and some of them say that there is a energy shift in in, in, in uh, coming now, uh, and especially like 2023. Is is that something you um, sort of agree with, or see, or understand, or think about in the same manner, like? energy shift for the earth something like that <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a curveball i don't know because i never heard you talk about it i'm just curious like what's your take on that when we start talking about these things i have to be extremely careful not to offend anybody mm. so one of the major problems with humanity and that and it's because of our education the way we are educated is mm. We are educated to praise our thoughts and our opinions as the highest pinnacle of our intellect. And mm. this is what makes us the supreme being on this planet. Mm. All of that is absolute crap. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. A fact is a fact, whether you believe it or not. It doesn't matter mm. what people believe. Mm. Belief mm. can't exist outside of your head. Mm. If if it does exist outside of your head, it's not a belief, it's a fact. Mm, it exists in here. Um, when it comes to energies and things like that, all things is energy. All life yeah. is energy. The only yeah. certainty in life is change. Mm -hmm. So to say there's a big energy change coming in 2023 is basically cold reading which is, do you know what cold reading is? No, no, I don't. <laughs> There's these things called Barnum statements where you pretend to read someone's mind and uh -huh. um, you can make statements that would be true to everyone on the planet. Uh -huh. For instance, I could say to you, um, 
oh, there's been a lot of changes in your life over the last week. You, yeah. you, seem, to have, you seem to have grown spiritually, but physically you've been a little bit tired lately. And uh-huh. I can say that to anyone on the planet and they'll go, oh, yeah, how did you know that? <laughs> it, <it's laughs> um, so what I'm getting at there is to go, oh, in 2023, there's going to be great changes. Now, if you can convince people of that, you can sell a whole bunch of books based on that. Mm. Mm. But what I was getting at is we are educated to see something and form an opinion about it, and then we mm. talk about the opinion as, as opposed to the thing that we've opinionated about. Mm-hmm. So we've been trained to replace actuality with opinions, with mm. replace truth with opinion. Mm. Mm. Um, anyway, I, the reason I'm saying all of this silly stuff is because yes there's going to be changes in 2023 there's going to be millions of them there's going to be changes mm. in 2024 mm. there were changes i mean let's go back a couple of years there was COVID. you know yeah, yeah, yeah. what a change that was yeah so, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, but because of life and physics and the way things are and the, mm. the con- the constant effects of change, we evolve, we get better, yeah. we learn things. And of course, 2023 is going to be major changes. Yeah. You know, the um, we're evolving, we're growing, we're becoming mm. more intelligent. That's mm. not necessarily a good thing. Some mm. of the worst people on the planet are the worst people on the planet because they're intelligent. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's, my, that's my take on it. Yeah, yeah. It's um, there are so many people online, so many people trying to seem important, so many people yeah. to be special in the eyes of others. That yeah. They come up with all of these things, these ideas, and these beliefs. And you know, yeah, yeah, life, yeah. life isn't complicated, uh, the way we think about it is very complicated, <laughs> but life itself is not, yeah. But the thing with energy, right? Because because I've seen some of your videos with the uh, and the, and this is the uh, the thing you do with your hands and, and stuff. It's so uh, the whole energy energy field, no pun intended, <laughs> is uh, is a mystery <laughs> for me. I'm very Swedish atheist. It's only the physicality that that's uh, in my world, right? So uh, I'm just curious and and um, uh, trying to yeah trying to get a grasp of of, of that whole thing. But in terms of energy for your, yeah, the thing you do with the papers and the, yeah, how would you, how would you put words to that? Like, what are you doing there? It's more a matter of what I'm not doing. Mind is everything. Mm. Mind is energy. There is no other kind of energy. Mm. Whether you're talking about nuclear energy or mental energy or the um, electrical energy or electromagnetic energy, it's all mind. Mm. Not your mind or my mind, but the mind, universal mind, the mind that is in all things, that animated Mm. force that we were talking about. Mm. So when you say energy, you need to know what your definition of that word is. Oh, yeah. I guess I don't actually. <laughs> okay, well then I can't really answer it. <laughs> no, but for me, energy is just a, a word. I yeah, I don't know what it, fully what it is. Right, the the thing the 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 thing that moves things, like keeps things alive. Yeah. Energy is a um, is any kind of force is an yeah. energy, particularly any kind of force that can be utilized. Yeah. So, you know, if, um, if if I blow on a piece of paper, uh-huh. for instance, I, I don't even know I'm showing you, you know what it looks like. Uh-huh. So, you know, that's considered energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's moving the paper. Mm-hmm. If you were to go take it one step forward, you could see my lungs doing that. That's energy. Mm-hmm. The contraction. I would send a, an electric, it depends how far back you want to go. I have an intent to demonstrate something. That intent jumps into my brain. Mm-hmm. That takes energy. Once it, it turns into my brain, my brain will turn the intent into a thought 
or, mm -hmm. or a picture form. That picture form, my brain will then take that picture form and manifest it by sending electrical impulses to my muscles, my lung mm -hmm. muscles, my arm muscles, etc. Mm -hmm. Any of the muscles that needs to be used to hold up the paper and to blow on it. So yes. these are all these are all forms of energy changing, yeah. change form constantly. Rasmus, you eat an apple in mm -hmm. 15 minutes, that apple is now Rasmus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you're when you start moving, mm. that energy that you're using to do this somehow mm. came from mm. that apple. Mm. You know, how? Mm. Mm. You go in there and watch it. It's incredible mm. shit. And mm. you know, there's this constant interaction between mind and matter, mind and body. Yeah. Um and it's all energy. It's crazy. You know? yeah, it's, it's a crazy intelligence or what, whatever it is, right? That 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 do that. That's uh, oh, keeps me keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> Too much energy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I think we're gonna come back to that. But first, I just want to finish the the, the timeline uh, stuff so people sort of know what you gone through um because i find it very interesting um your uh, teacher there in australia told you to go to tibet and he gave you a sort of a letter of uh, recognition or permission or something yeah, to, yeah. To, to bring to the to the lamas of uh, tibet or <laughs> yeah, he gave me a silver tube with a um a scroll inside and he that's, uh, that's not, that sounds like a movie that sounds like from a movie <laughs> yeah yeah it'd be nice to make a movie actually apparently we are making one but, yeah um, yeah 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 i'll let you know about that a couple oh, of guys okay. there's a couple of guys oh. in um a scientist and his brother in um austria they're making right. a movie about mysticism and alchemy oh wow and they've invited me to be a part of the movie so that's very oh, exciting that's awesome yeah yeah, I'd be uh, happy to take a look at that when it's out. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so so uh, go on with that. Like, so you you uh, you take off to to uh, Tibet, and then I heard you do the two week hike <laughs> with the yeah. with 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 friend or or some uh, someone Sherpa. Sherpa. Yeah, 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 yeah. How was that? At the time that I went there, it was um, it was very very dangerous place to be. Mm. The Chinese had only ousted the Dalai Lama. He he was made to leave Tibet in 1959. Mm. Uh, if we, I went and stayed with the Dalai Lama for a while. Oh, yeah. um, but if you ever want to do anything like that, you actually have to go down into India mm. uh, to see him. You take a big bus trip. Mm. He lives place called um oh gosh what's it called Dar dharamsala yeah 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 where he's living at the moment yeah <clears throat> so um very very long story short got there in 1974 there was uh, lots of shit going down so you had to be very careful i met my sherpa or he waited for me and met me he, this was in nepal by the way Mm. So uh, I met him in Nepal, and from there we um, made our way up to the border, and then yeah. we went up to the mountains. He took me to my monastery at the time, mm. um, and that's it, really. From there, we would get up at three a.m. every morning, mm -hmm. have a shower, usually a cold shower. Then you would meditate for at least an hour. Then you would do some exercises. The, most of the monks would go for a walk. Mm -hmm. um, I'd already been doing Kung Fu, so that was my exercise. There's mm -hmm. no thou shalt in those monasteries. It's up to you. You follow suit and you do what's necessary to be done. And if you don't, mm -hmm. you get asked to leave because, you know, there's one reason why you're there mm -hmm. and you have to do the work. Mm. So I didn't have to do the exercises that they were doing. You can do any kind of physical mm. exercise. So some, a lot of them do yoga. Mm. But for me, it was Kung Fu. 
I was told to find my way in my practice of Kung Fu. Mm. Uh, and that mm. stuck with me. I understood what that meant at an early age. So that's what I used. But this so, was uh, this was a, a Buddhist uh, monastery at that point, early. Or would you call it Buddhist? Buddha, Buddhist, a mystical Buddhist mysticism. It's okay. called Qian. If you want to use a Chinese term, it's called Qian Buddhism, okay. which is Buddhism without the religious elements. Mm. It's already, only... already from 14, 15 years old. Sorry, say that again. Uh, al already from 14, 15 years old, you started with the sort of outside religion path anyway. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. One of my, yeah, yeah. Um, there's a lot I ha I'm not telling you because it would take several days. But, <sighs> you know, when I was at school, I used to, um, I, I, I noticed very quickly that my teacher would tell me something and then I would put my meaning to his words yeah. or her words. And that's what I was hearing in my head. Everyone, that's not just me. You know, mm. if I, I'm talking to you now, you're putting your own meaning to my words. Yeah. You're not using my meaning to my words. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what my teacher was telling me. I was actually teaching myself. I was putting my mm. own meaning to the teacher's <clears throat> words. Therefore, it was my meanings that I was paying attention to and learning from. Mm. So I had a different way of looking at things. Um, but also to answer your question, my main question was once I'd heard about enlightenment mm. um, and to be honest, my first hearing of enlightenment was an old Kung Fu movie. I think it was called the quest or something, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it had someone like, um, Oh, what's that guy's name? The old Kung Fu guy from TV. Bruce Lee. No, before him. Mm. Gosh, you're making me feel really old now. Uh, <laughs> Bruce Lee is, is my main man. Uh, that I've Yeah, heard. Right. Uh, now, Before him on TV, uh, there used to be uh, this American actor. He, he played uh, Kwai yeah. Tang Kane or something. He played this Kung Fu guy and became a monk. Doesn't uh, matter. Yeah. Um, what was I telling you about that? Yes. So my questioning was, are there any religions in the world that consistently produce enlightened mm. people? <clears throat> and very quickly, the answer was obviously no, there isn't. Mm. Mm. Um, are, are there any schools in the world that consistently produce enlightened people? Well, mm. not, not that we know of, really. Mm. Mm. Are there individual mystics in the world, male or female, that consistently produce enlightened students? Yes, mm. there are. Mm. Okay, now we're onto something. Mm. So where do most of them live? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Hence, I ended up in the Himalayas and oh, yeah. the mountains of China. So that yeah, was my yeah. line of thinking. So from yeah. that, my and I didn't know it at the time, but I was uh, the like of the law of like attracts like. Mm -hmm. I really needed a teacher. One came along. I really needed understand things my teacher handed me over to his father who was much much wiser mm -hmm. my need to understand enlightenment and go beyond the religions got me sent to the himalayas mm. so my need what i needed for internal contentment was coming my way mm. From that, I learned my first law of magic, that life always answers to need, but it never, ever answers to want. Want mm. only occurs through the ego. Mm. So, and how that turns out can be anybody's guess. <laughs> when, you, when you need something, you don't put any effort into that. Life will give you mm. what you need. I can mm. give you a quick example if you like. Yep. <clears throat> You may have been at a time, some point in your life, and most people listening to this will understand this, whereby you can't pay your rent this week. You've been struggling with money and mm. your rent has to be paid on Friday, $300. Otherwise, you're going to have to vacate. Mm. Now, 
you'd be running around trying to find money. You can't find any money. You can't find anything anywhere. No one has anything to lend you at the moment. What, mm. what the hell are you going to do about it? Mm. The night before you have to vacate, a friend that you haven't seen in 10 years calls mm -hmm. you on the phone and says, hey, Rasmus, remember yeah. that $500 you lent me 10 years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Guess what? I'm doing really well. I'm sorry it's taken so long. Here's your yeah. $500. And here's another 500 because I yeah. made you wait so long. Now you've got a thousand dollars. That came from your need, mm. and mm. nothing you have to put out there for it. Mm. Now, want another true story. There's a, a woman I was training and teaching, and she'd been doing this for about 15 years. And she saw something that she really wanted. I think it was a little cottage or something she really wanted. And she wanted. Fifty thousand dollars to get that cottage. Mm -hmm. This is all want. She didn't need it. She had plenty of places to live. She just wanted yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So through the want, she came up with a ritual. She, mm -hmm. she devised and developed a ritual. She did the ritual on the right day at the right time, using the right incense and the right colors. Mm -hmm. Less than a week later, her much loved grandmother died and left her fifty thousand oh. dollars. She was in grief for years afterwards. Oh, wow. So she paid for that. That's the difference between want and need. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Mm. Yeah, that's deep. So <laughs> yeah, that's that's another level. Oh dear. Mm. That's really, that's actually happening to you every second of every day. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I've been thinking a lot about that. Like I'm, I'm running uh, sort of businesses here in in uh, in uh, Chiang Mai, and lately with my uh, meditation journey, been thinking a lot about that and about the uh, <clears throat> serendipity of business deals. For example, <laughs> it's like sometimes you just try, try. Like I really need, I really want this deal. But then, and then another time, and you don't get it. Another time just comes right into your lap and just sort of solves everything. So, yeah, it's um, interesting to watch. So there is two of you going on in there when you, in a situation, what you're talking about now, your average everyday person would let the ego and the want comes from ego. And when I yeah. say ego, I don't just mean bad thoughts. I mean the whole gamut of thoughts yeah that's yeah what we call the self or the ego mm. so that's that's the guy that does the wanting mm. then there's a spirit and that spirit does the needing mm. so to be a highly successful spiritual businessman if you could learn to just devise your business around need mm learn how to work that correctly you will never mm. ever ever have a bad day in business mm. so the spirit needs the ego wants mm. and they're both very very Almost. much to play with so you would you would um yeah you would you really try to drop the ego as much as possible then uh, and, and really how, how how would you how would you do that Oh, that's I, got friend, I got a friend. She she talks a lot about uh, heart, like uh, let go of the the mind and get go into the heart, and that's how you sort of yeah manifest the things you want uh, anyway, uh, and don't think so much about it. And and I'm starting to see that, and she's fully convinced. <laughs> uh, what would you say? Heart and mind. I'm not sure what you mean. What would I say about what in particular? <clears throat> no, the uh, it, it, is there any uh, like the, the thinking and versus dropping down to her? Do you do you believe anything around that? Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> I have no beliefs. I don't. No. A belief won't take you anywhere good, except your fantasies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The whole, okay, let me put it this way. <clears throat> Every system in the world that has ever been devised a workable system to get someone from everyday normal living and the misery that may come with it 
mm. to the enlightened mind. Let me start that again. There are many, many methods that have been devised over thousands of years by millions of people mm. to train your to train you to get out of your ego and engage mm. life purely from the spirit and the higher mind. Mm. <clears throat> Because that's it. That's the journey. You ask mm. anyone on a spiritual path, most 99% of people, if you were to say, why, why are you on your spiritual path? They won't be able to give you an answer. They'll go, mm. oh, they'll give you a whole bunch of beliefs. Yeah. Oh, because it's the right thing to do. It's because of this. Oh, it just makes me feel great. And it, it's got... Anyway. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, that's it. The path to enlightenment, the path to self mastery is basically what the name that we give to re engineering the human condition as it stands today. Mm. The human condition as it stands today, very few people place any importance on spirit or mind. Most people are purely just trying to get through every day, trying to survive, trying to ease their sorrow, their misery, their poverty, their confusion about life, their fear about life, fear about death. Mm. Um, this is all left up to the ego to try and wrap its head around and to do something about. And this mm. is why society is the way it is today. Mm. I need to go a little bit deeper, if you don't mind, Rasmus. Yeah, please, please. <clears throat> when you sit back and you're watching your thoughts, you have to try and realize what you are at that moment. If you know when you're thinking and you know when you're not thinking, then knowing has nothing to do with thought. Mm. So what is it? that? What's that knowing compared to all of this thinking that's going on? So all of this thinking that's going on and all these thoughts creates the society we see today. Mm -hmm. Someone's thought created a lamppost. Someone's thought created a car. Someone's thought created a house, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, and on mm -hmm. and on and on it goes. Now, and of course, in that, there is lots of war and rape and murder and stealing and all of the horrible things that people do to each other. Why does that happen? Mm. Really? Why? Why are we like that? That's pretty screwed up. Yeah. Now, if you take one of your thoughts, any thought, break it in half, and you look into it, there's nothing in there. It's data. Mm. It's a mm. dead living thing. It's a turd of knowing. Mm. It doesn't even know you're looking at it. And yet you are allowing these thoughts to dictate every second of your day. And this mm. is why we're, we've allowed these dead things to create the world that we live in. Mm. And, of course, because they have no wisdom, inherent wisdom of their own, they create lots of wonderful, miraculous things like huge bridges and huge buildings and wonderful hospitals and medicines and all of that. But somewhere mm. along the line, we always fuck it up mm. because we're allowing these dead things to rule our lives and we're not interjecting spiritual we're not interjecting spirituality into it mm. and therefore it's very cold mm. you know society anyway you, you see what i mean yeah, yeah i think so <laughs> so to get back onto the path of actuality and reality and the meaning of life and to know why you're here and to have a fantastic reason to get up every morning to live and to just feel great about yourself mm. you have to start engaging life from something other mm. everyone out there listening to this now you just think about it the way you've lived and the way you think and the way you eat and the way you are and the way you speak to people has created what you are right now the way mm. you are right now mm. now if you are an absolutely discontent person and you are searching for meaning in life, you're searching for this, you're searching for spirituality, then you are not content. If you were content, you wouldn't be searching for anything. <laughs> Why would you? You're content. Yeah. Yeah. 
So what I'm getting at is all of those people that are searching today and are discontent, it's because what you are now is due to how you think, how you live, who you talk to, who you mm. allow into your life and who you don't, who you listen mm. to and believe. These have all made up the person that you are now and the life that you have now. And if you are discontent, then the way you are isn't cutting it for you, is it? Mm because mm. you will be content mm. so you have to change the way you think change the way you are change your beliefs change your predilect um, anyway you get what i mm -hmm. mean go on and on and on and on um, but if what you are and what you know and how you live is making you discontent then stop doing what you're doing and change it yeah yeah and um, that's what the path is all about Mm. understanding where real spiritual contentment comes from. I'm not mm. talking about happiness. I'm talking about internal spiritual joy. Happiness mm. comes with things. I give you an ice cream. You're a happy kid. You drop your ice cream on the ground. You start crying. So that happiness is based on things, having yeah. something. Joy mm. is what you're born with. You're mm. full of joy, but as mm. the baby gets older and as a baby starts to see mm. misery in the life around it, as it starts to see mum and dad screaming at each other and it starts mm. to see one of the siblings get a smack on the bum and mm. until that starts to occur, that baby is just happy, happy, joy, joy, a pristine, mm. clean little bundle of awareness and consciousness mm. and unconditional love. Babies mm. love everyone because they don't know what people are capable of yet. Mm. Mm. So that original mind that has no thoughts in it, you can watch in a baby. Mm. The only difference between an adult and a baby is the adult has superimposed 100 billion thoughts mm -hmm. yeah. in, uh, into that yeah. mind. So that's the path. It's and that is bringing spirituality back into your life is re-engineering mm. yourself to get back to that pure, pristine, clean, spiritual awareness, that original mm. mind that you were born as, mm. the mind that nature produced. Nature yeah. didn't produce your ego. People produce that. Mm. Nature doesn't put names and labels and opinions in you. People mm. do that. Mm. So the self has been built by people. Mm. Not, not you, other people. Mm. Think of all the information that you've got in there is information that someone told you. It's yeah. not, most of it isn't from your own experience. Mm. So you mm. don't know if it's real or not. Mm. So what I was getting to about 20 minutes ago, there is matter <laughs> and it has its own life and it's self, yeah. it's self sustaining matter. It, it's like a, a car with AI. It can run mm. itself. The only thing it can't mm. do is put fuel into itself. Mm. But I'm sure we'll get to that eventually. Mm. So we've got matter. Then you've got this spirit stuff, this mind, this awareness, this consciousness, and that's in the matter. Mm. But they're two different things. The, ma the material body, yourself, it's limited by emotion. It's limited by psychology. It's limited by time. It is going to mm. die one day. It's limited by um, its resilience. It can, you know, it can, it can only stand up to certain things and then it'll start to break down. Yeah. So it's an extremely limited thing, matter. Now, the mind that you are in there isn't made of matter. Mm. It's invisible. It's non-locatable. You can't find it. You can't cut someone's head open and touch their awareness and go, oh, there it is. Mm. You can't find it. If it's not made of matter, then it doesn't decay. If it doesn't decay, then it doesn't die. So that's mm. that part of you that is immortal. Mm. Therefore, it's not limited by psychology. It's not limited by emotion. It's not limited by time. So that's the other you. So now you've got this part of you that's limitless in every mm. aspect, and then you've mm. got this other you that is limited in every aspect. Mm. And this is why life can be difficult if you don't understand these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is where all the uh, 
the wars go on in people's heads is that being torn between mind and matter mm. if you want to go right back into old religious days they're talking about the devil whispering in your ear yeah yeah that, well i do ear. i do want to think I, i do want to touch on on something um and it's a beautiful topic of death <laughs> oh lovely so topic. so um you uh, had a uh, accident or uh, the, the the chinese uh, in, innovation there in, in tibet um where they had a noose around your neck right yes uh, that was in lhasa yeah. yeah 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 so um i want to hear more about that in detail and also your internal process at that point you have been meditating and doing the work for many many years at that point right mm. what was going on internally when you were thinking you were about to die in a way because that must have been going through your head right because they didn't tie the rope hard enough that's what i heard from your earlier uh podcast so at some point as they push you off them you must have sort of thinking you were about to pass away right Have you ever had a push bike accident? Push bike accident? No, I, I don't know what the push bike is really. Oh, a, a treadley, a, a bicycle. Um, um, okay, uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Have you had any other kind of accident that you could think of? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, some car accident. Uh, this is particularly one car accident with a friend in Swedish winter. Uh, were you were you just surviving during that accident, or were you thinking about the accident as it, it was, was very with few two seconds, three seconds, very quick. I don't really remember anything, and it was over, and I realized I, I survived. So yeah. Okay, well, what I'm trying to get at here is, you don't think about it. Mm. You, it's while it's happening to you, you don't think about it. It's nobody thinks about. Nobody thinks about what's happening in the moment. No. I've said this a few times. If you go to the toilet and you're having a poo, you're not thinking about opening up your sphincter. You're not thinking about measuring the length of the poo as it's coming out of your bum hole. You're no. thinking about work or you're thinking about something you have to do when you're finished having a poo. Mm. When you're eating your dinner, you're not feeling the fork. You're not feeling how many peas you just put in your mouth. You're not mm. following the peas around your mouth with your tongue. You're not being aware of any of what you're doing. Mm. You're thinking about something else or you're talking mm. to someone at the dinner table. Mm. Most of your daily life you do without thinking about it. Mm. And when you're in the moment, you do even less thinking. Mm. So to answer your question fully, your question fully is i don't like dates i've got a terrible head for dates somewhere around 1985 yeah i was at a meeting at uh, a place called chok hong monastery uh -huh. which is in lhasa that's where the chinese disguised as um they were chinese soldiers disguised as tibetan policemen and the only reason we can figure that was so that we would just let them into the monastery we were at a meeting at chok hong monastery and um there was a revolution at the time going on in tibet mm. still fight they were still fighting the chinese yeah. there were quite a few westerners in the streets causing trouble hippies mm. causing um they wanted everyone out on the streets and the monks they don't listen to anyone other than the master or the mm. dalai lama basically mm. Mm. Uh, we were all wondering what the hell was going on there mm. was 12 people from my monastery there was monks from all different monasteries meeting at this chakong in mm. last um and the chinese they didn't like that so they started beating people they came into our monastery there's actual footage of this somewhere online yeah um they were throwing monks off the roofs they were they didn't shoot they weren't shooting anyone they didn't want any guns to be going off because that would have mm. attracted more and more people and that would have been a mm. problem mm. when i was on the roof um they put a noose around my neck They picked on me a bit more because I was a Westerner and they don't like mm. Westerners. Mm. <clears throat> so there's a guy putting a noose around my neck. There's a guy back there tying it off. Mm. The guy 
and they weren't talking to each other. So this lack of communication in mm. the machine was a good thing in this particular mm. case. Mm. So he puts a noose around my neck, him and his friend throw me off. The mm. guy tying the knot didn't tie the knot. He was mm. too slow. He was only yeah, halfway yeah. Uh, So that let go. I fell. It was only two stories. It wasn't that high. Yeah. Um, hit the ground. And that was it, really. And then yeah. from there, once everything had finished and everyone had been ushered out and <clears throat> all the rest of it, quite a few people had died. Mm. Nine, there was 12 of us and nine of the people from my monastery had been killed. Wow. We, didn't have, we didn't see any of those again, obviously. Mm. Mm. Um, and we got taken and tortured for, I think, five days shortly. Oh, wow. wow. And burning cigarette butts and everything else. And all they wanted... It wasn't even a political thing. It was just they were having fun, I think. Mm. Um, That's crazy. Like these topics don't really get discussed uh, a lot in, in, in the West. Uh, that uh, these things actually. I don't, I don't think it's happening so much now. I'm going no. back 30 odd years. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it was more. Maybe, maybe even more. Mm. <laughs> um, so that was it. We got tortured. The uh, the authorities eventually came and saved us. Mm. Um, I've got scars across there where a bullet caught me across there. Oh, wow. I've got a couple of bullet holes in my legs oh. from a different time. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, and I got lots of cigarette burns. All my fingers, none of my fingers touch each other. You could probably see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So they, they snapped each finger oh. individually. Oh. And they just wanted us to denounce the Dalai Lama, mm. basically, and mm. no one did. Oh, really? So that's a, that's what all that, that was about. And then I came back to, came back, I'm in Sweden. I went back to Australia uh -huh. um, to get to get over my wounds and all the rest of that. But to answer yeah. another of your questions, during all of that time, there's no thinking going on. You're just mm. dealing with each moment as it comes mm. along. And to be honest with you, one of the greatest things anyone on this earth can learn to do is just to deal with each moment as it arrives. Yeah, yeah. And the confidence, one thing that happens is you will stop planning your life because mm. you, gain, you gain so much confidence in your ability to deal with each moment and mm. what it brings with it. Mm. Um, you stop planning things. Because mm. if you know that it doesn't matter what life brings, you'll deal with mm. it and you'll be fine. Mm. Mm. So that's the attitude we all have. Um, but there so was no, I've, like, uh, did you suffer a lot? Like, did you remember it? Do you remember it as a very suff sufferable time or judgment or a uh, wish didn't happen? How, how was the, no, nothing. Okay, I'll give you another for example. Um, you can't see it, but I, I have a very, very big scar across my forearm where yeah. someone hit me with a, um, a samurai sword. And that was very, very painful. And it was causing me, while I was meditating and while I was uh, sitting in on, on lectures with my teachers, it was causing me problems. And mm. one of my teachers took me aside. We were talking about change at the time, but that has nothing mm. to do with it. <clears throat> and... I said, I need to rise above this pain. It's um, mm. distracting me from my my focus. Mm. And my teacher just laughed at me and he said, well, obviously you're focused on your pain, so I don't know what you're talking about. You're focused. Mm. And I went, oh, yeah. Uh. And then he said, let's go through it. And I said, okay. So he said, um, let's get into the pain. What I need you to describe it. Mm. I said, Okay. It's on my arm, obviously. Mm. And the first thing I notice is an extreme sharpness. And mm. he goes, well, obviously your arm's been cut and the nerve endings have been severed. So they're, they're very sensitive, very raw, like mm. a brand new born baby at the moment. That's what you're mm. feeling. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. What else are you feeling? Well, there's a deep, subtle throbbing, boom, boom, mm. and that's like mm. pushing on the nerves. That's a little bit annoying. Well, you know what that is. That's just your heartbeat, your blood pumping. But your mm. nerves, again, are so raw. You're very sensitive and you can feel the, the pumping. So what else? And I had to think. I'm thinking, 
but that's it actually there isn't anything else he goes so are they mingled those two feelings and so i'd look at it and i go interesting i don't think they are mingled i think <laughs> And then he just walked away laughing and I caught up with him much later and I didn't realize what he'd done to me. And I said, why were you laughing at me? Is this me being a Westerner or something? And he goes, no, he goes, during those last moments when I walked away, you were so involved in your pain, you were enjoying it. And I'm sure, <laughs> you, I'm sure you didn't realize that it was painful anymore. Oh, wow. And I just, wow. And I got goosebumps. I had a realization. Mm. I was laughing like an idiot for two days. Wow. Uh, so pain it doesn't matter. It's just something else mm. you're with. Mm. The horrible thing about pain is when you're trying to get away from it and you can't. Yeah, no, no. The, the, that that the, is the horrible the, part of pain. Resisting, you're resisting the, the pain, right? Yeah, and trying to get away from it. What's yeah, the first yeah. thing the child does? You hit yourself yeah. on the finger with a hammer. You try and flick it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, away yeah. from you, you horrible thing so pain when you see it in its gamut as a whole it's like ah and you mm. just try to get away from it and the misery comes from the trying to get away from it mm. if you can sit with it and be with it and analyze it mm. it's just something else that you're watching so it fade, fades away yeah and with with my patients who come to my clinic with emotional pain um we'll, we'll just say emotional pain the yeah. first question i i'll ask them is okay well where is it where are you feeling it uh -huh. and they a lot of the time they can't locate it and i'll go well that's interesting isn't it <laughs> you've come all this way you've paid me money and you want to get rid of this thing and when i ask you where it is you can't find it for me mm -hmm. And then they have a bit of a laugh. So we spend 10, 20 minutes trying to locate where they're feeling this misery. Once we do locate it, they're so happy and so joyous, <laughs> it disappears again because it's not misery anymore. It's something else that they're just watching. That's so we assume that pain is painful, but it is mm -hmm. not. We mm -hmm. assume that misery is unstoppable, but it is not. Mm -hmm. It's all about yeah, clarity, my friend. It's, it's so interesting. The uh, yeah, a lot of these insights came to me in my last vipassana. Like, oh, it's so much of this, like a story, and we be, just believe in so much stuff, right? Uh, about... Vipassana is a wonderful thing for getting mm. people to to showing people the inward journey. Yeah, yeah, I would it's say so. A, That's the uh, gateway to getting you yeah. to go for the first time yeah yeah you'll yeah. be amazed how many emails we get asking what i mean by going inwards what does that mean oh really i'd never considered that question before <laughs> I, well, I, I can i can relate i can relate uh, i would say a year and a half ago i i wouldn't been able to sort of understand that fully i would say and still maybe not but but still yeah Mm. A year and a half ago, I, I wouldn't really. What do you mean, go inwards? Like, I have a heart. What do you mean? <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But, so, but it's so much. It's so much that comes from it. It's so much insights. Just contemplating on your own body and uh, yeah, all the things that goes on when you're the process just, of being. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so much happening without us. Like one of the things that in my uh, latest vipassana, I was like. Uh, yeah, you're not talking to anyone and you're uh, in meditation hall and in, in your own sort of a hut and then you're all of a sudden you're kind of at one, one point I was angry at the woman because she walked strange. <laughs> <laughs> so then yeah. I was like, and the, uh, uh, so, so the, the realization was like, oh my God, this is, and then I really understood this is only about me. There's nothing because like a minute ago, I was angry at this thing. And the, yesterday I was angry at this thing. So I was like, this is, it's only in myself. That's the, that's the only thing that's consistent in, in, in this. Uh, mm. Yeah. So it's good. A uh, few good, good uh, realizations like that. Yeah. And that gets back to what we were saying at the beginning of our conversation today. It's, um, it's this ego. You, you just described yeah. what your, your ego does when you watch it and yeah. it's the very same ego that creates all the misery in the world.
Mm. It all comes from us. We create mm. all of it. There's nothing yeah. out there making life miserable for us. We're doing mm. it ourselves because we're a mm. stupid monkey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are. The, yeah. Most of the problems in the world, if not all of them, are due yeah. human problems are due to the fact that we have been trained to believe wrongly mm. that we are the pinnacle of creation. Mm. We are the children of God, and that is all bullshit mm. crap. Mm. We mm. are nasty. I'm not talking about everyone. We have the ability to be wonderful creatures, mm. but generally mm. speaking, humans are nasty, self-centered, arrogant, disrespectful pieces of shit. <laughs> and it's only when you realize that yeah. that you want to be better. Yeah, 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 yeah. When you are sick of being an asshole, when you get sick of being this pathetic little monkey that just does what monkeys do, uh -huh. you, you, if if you're lucky you will be you will push yourself towards being a better person mm, mm, the mm. only way to do that is to do what you did my friend you start mm. to go inwards mm. the that mm. is the, the the first doorway into the inward journey and everyone i think should do it yeah you don't yeah, have to go to a monastery you don't have to go to a temple get a couple of friends together and mm. go and rent a cabin for the weekend yeah yeah, know, yeah. if you don't have but the money but 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 it does. Uh, it, it takes time. This was my third one, and maybe I'm I'm just boneheaded. <laughs> but uh, this was my my third one, and it. Uh, I did the same one uh, last year, two weeks, and a lot of process there as well. But this one was a really a, a big one, I would say. Um, Could I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. Why don't you do it yourself now that you know how to do it? Uh, what What do you mean? A Vipassana why retreat? You, why don't you do your own Vipassana retreat by yourself now that you know what to do and how to do it? Just me or organize, you mean? Just you. Um, I do uh, meditation, but uh, I haven't uh, taken the time to go away silently yet, but I'm planning to to, to do it just uh, myself in a cabin, yeah, for sure. Right. Because, yeah. because you don't want to train yourself to rely on a certain mm. place. You yeah good point it. yeah 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 one thing that i have a problem with is people they come to me and this has happened a lot they come to mm. me they go oh, my, my previous master gave me a mantra and i've mm. been running this mantra for 10 years mm. and i'm still in the same position i was in 10 years ago am i doing it wrong and i have to point out that a mantra is a thought um yeah you see what I mean? You're focused on your mantra. Eventually, rather than being caught up on your mantra, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a quick example. One that everyone would have mm. heard of would be Om Mani Padmi Hom. Yeah? Yeah. That means uh, hail to the jewel in the center of the lotus. They're basically talking about um, the higher mind, mm -hmm. the awareness that we've been talking about. Mm. <clears throat> so... How could I put this? Om Mani Padmi Hom. If you have a head, this is very basically why you do it. If you've got 150,000 thoughts going on in here and you can't stop it, and you start chanting Om Mani Padmi Hom, and you want to join mm. the beginning of that sentence to the end so that it goes, Om Mani Padmi Hom, mm. Mani Padmi Hom, Mani. Now you can focus on that. And while you're focused on mm. that, all the other 149,000 mm. thoughts that were there screwing up your life and making you ill, you're not focused on it mm. anymore. So for mm. that moment, you're just focused on mm. this. Thing. But you have trained yourself to rely on that mm. as a focus point. Eventually, mm. you need to be able to sit back, watch your brain and your ego mm. using the mantra that whatever you are, you are in there watching that, that's has nothing to do with the mantra at all. Mm. So to get someone to drop their mantra, once it's done its job, and its job mm. is to basically show you that you have the ability to focus your mind out of all of the prob problems mm -hmm. and beliefs and yeah. delusions of the mind. 
So you focus your mind into this mantra. When the mantra has done its job, you get rid of the mantra as well. Yeah. So the reason being, getting back to the beginning of our conversation, when you are meditating and watching your thoughts, those thoughts are the ego, the monkey, mm. the lower mind. Whatever you are watching that at that moment is the thing that you were born as, the original mm. mind that is in all things. Mm. Um, and that's all there is to it, my friend. That's mm. the path. Mm. Lots of things happen in between. You you will come across as you free up the mind more and more in your practices, you, you things will start to move without you touching it. You will start to finish people's sentences, people you've never yeah. met before. It's easy yeah. to do with a loved one, but yeah. someone you've never met in your life and you just start finishing their sentences. Mm. Things like that start to happen. Mm. Um Yeah, this, it's, it's interesting uh, something I've noticed is sort of yeah, serendipity and synchronicity and sort of just opportunities in, in just people in my life. Just I think just kind of flows better in a way by, yeah. by letting go uh, piece by piece in a way. Yeah, yeah. Well done. You've got yeah. a great future coming up. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you end up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, <was> so <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, curious. I'm very curious. Um, yeah, I'm curious on the global macro scale, the conversation that's in Europe and the US right now. Um, I think that the West and the East should talk more. <laughs> that's how I feel in the, in, in the sort of spiritual political sense. I feel like this the East has a lot of wisdom that, the West uh, haven't acknowledged yet, in a way. Can I tell and you I how the West could? Sorry. Can I point out how easy that would be and what would happen? Yeah, yeah, please, please. If you have half a dozen people in a room, let's say we're talking here about uh, Stalin. Hitler, I can't think of any other ones, but some really nasty people, horrible people. Yeah. Those people are horrible people because of the way they think. They're horrible people because of the way they were brought mm. up, the way they've been educated, the way they've been programmed. Mm. Every single one of those people, when they were born, was identical to you. Mm. No hatred, mm. no bias, no yeah. anger nothing of that nature whatsoever so if everyone mm. on the planet everyone on the planet if they were to meditate for five minutes for that five mm. minutes there wouldn't be any hatred on the planet no war mm. no, mm -hmm. want, no mm. nastiness no murder no rape no theft mm. just for that five minutes so that's how mm. easy it can be yeah 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 Everyone just learns to put their thoughts aside for, let's say, 20 minutes a day. Yeah. For 20 minutes a day, every day, the world would understand absolute peace. Mm, mm. That's how easy it could be. But, of yeah. course, to get 8 billion the, people. The, yeah, the, the West doesn't, uh, the West uh, don't really believe in this at all. They don't even see it. Like, you have the one of the founding fathers almost like the one of philosophers i think therefore i am right it's such a <laughs> bullshit uh, statement i feel like i think yeah, therefore yeah. i am it's like total opposite what we should uh, be yes 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 yeah yeah it's interesting it is isn't it there's a there's a lot out there that's wrong yeah yeah the question is of course for you i mean for me this is a difference between you and i uh, mm. my, my object of observation is the universe. Mm. What happens on this planet is irrelevant. What happens okay. on the planet next door is irrelevant. What happens to any one planet is irrelevant. It's a part mm. of the universal life. So I, you have to. Uh, I sorry. can't see that far. I can't see that far yet. <laughs> you can. You just don't know how. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
maybe later. Yeah, maybe. It's, it's not difficult. It would take an hour. Oh, really? Correct practice. Yeah. Oh, wow. If, uh, if you ever came back to Sweden and if you saw me mm. in person, mm. I can have you out of your body in less than 15 minutes. Oh, really? Oh, and in that moment, and just imagine it's not hard when you leave your body, you don't take your brain with you. Uh, so when you, when you come out of your body, all of your thoughts are still in the body. They're still in uh, the brain. You don't take those with you. You take your knowing with you, but not your uh, thought. Uh, I've said this a million times. You can't think of something you don't know. Mm. So the knowing is already there before you start thinking it. So the trick is to get rid of the middleman mm. and just just live life purely from the knowing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From, from that knowing, your needs will be answered like this because mm. they won't be interfered with mm. by the ego, by the thought process. Mm. That's the trick. Yeah, interesting. Well, right back at you. If you ever want to get out of the cold in Sweden... <laughs> Chiang Mai is a beautiful place, just saying. Okay. I actually came here. The, the, one of the other reasons I came here was I really missed the snow. I don't oh, function, really? Yeah, I don't function well in the heat. Oh, <laughs> wow. So, you know, born in Scotland, brought up in yeah. northern England, yeah. uh, living in the Himalayas, uh, northern uh, the mountains of China. Yeah. It was all cold, 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 and I just yeah. loved it. And then I went to Australia and... There were some places in Australia I was living at, Mildura for one, it got up to 53 mm. degrees Celsius at one point. Mm. Mm. Wow. That's damn hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd had enough. I'd been there oh, quite some time, 10 years, I think. But I'd oh. had enough. So oh. I wanted to see snow. I wanted to get back into the cold. Oh. Um, I wanted to be with the bears and the moose and the, the, mm. the wolves. On this island, I've got all of that, not the bears, yeah. but we've got everything else. Oh, wow. I, have, I have a beaver and some sea otters oh, wow. that live, live here on my, my jetty. Um, there's uh, pine martens running across the decking. Mm. Yeah, beautiful big creatures. Makes me, uh, makes me miss uh, Sweden a bit. I, I, I do miss uh, the, the, the nature. It's, uh, or, Sweden yeah, I don't, miss, I don't miss everyday life. Going to work in... in um, in the Swedish winter, that's uh, it's not something I miss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this is where I'm lucky. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got that thing up there. <laughs> <laughs> the heater. I love it. I love the snow. I love the ice. I love the yeah, cold. So, yeah, yeah. I hope Sweden take care of the uh, take care of you well. So I got uh, one uh, sort of last question story i want to hear about and then if we can sort of finish uh, with some meditation uh before we wrap this up okay so yeah. i want to hear about the dalai lama story what how how did you get to meet dalai lama how was it how long did you spend with him how is the energy there's like this rumors that every time he lands in a new city that crimes crime goes down 25 percent or something <laughs> that, that's uh, people's reactions and response to him being there yeah, 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 exactly. So, just um, curious, how's how's Dalai Lama and hang around with? All right, two things I need to point out with the Dalai Lama: he is an extremely humble Buddhist monk. That's how he mm. would see himself. Mm. Um, that's it, really. He's extremely humble. He 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 doesn't. You know, every time he walks into a hall, he has a podium that he's meant to sit on traditionally, but he rarely does. He'll come down and sit amongst the people. Mm -hmm. He's just a very, very lovely, humble man. He's got a great sense of humor. Um, I saw him for two weeks. Mm -hmm. I can tell you what he does. There's, I don't know what else to tell you. He's, he's got answers for everything. He's a wonderful yeah. person. I yeah. have, uh, these days, I have, um, going back to when I was nine and I was having memories, I have memories of three previous lifetimes now. The Dalai yeah. Lama has memories of 14 previous yeah, lifetimes. Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. 
Mm. Um, he was the one that uh, I had quite a few epiphanies talking to him. I was mm. sitting with him one time and we were talking about change. And I said, what, what can you tell me about change to get my head around change? I know what change is, but I don't understand why everyone puts so much importance on it. Mm. And he said, well, it, you see those people over there walking down the street? And I said, yep. And he said, those people in 100 years will be dead and gone. And so will everyone else in this village. In 100 years, they will all be dead and gone and replaced by other people. That's change. Mm. Mm. And he said, what could you add to that? And this happens with the Dalai Lama and a lot of the higher masters. They will throw something back at you to make you think or to make you oh. look or to try oh. and keep you out. And I said, well, to me, what that means is it doesn't matter how low you may go in life because change is the only certainty. Once you've hit rock bottom, the next change has to be upwards, doesn't it? Uh -huh. Once you've hit rock bottom and you can't get any lower in your life, the next change is, is going to be you going back up again. So uh -huh. life's just going to get better. So it doesn't matter how bad life is, it's going to change. That's mm. something really well worth knowing and having faith in uh -huh. so that's the one of the main things i got from the dalai lama oh. but he he gets up at 3 a.m in the morning he goes for a walk he will meditate for an hour or so then he will have porridge he loves his porridge mm. um then he will meditate some more does he do uh, does he do a lot of stuff except for his sort of official uh, but does he do uh, does he have a practice that's different from other monks would you say no 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 it's all about um <clears throat> it's about understanding atrophy this has got that sounds mm. strange i know but <laughs> bring it on <laughs> If your initial response to a certain situation in life is anger, you are developing your anger, you are strengthening your anger, and you are opening easier pathways. Every time it happens, the pathway mm. for your anger to come out is going to get easier and easier and easier. And your ability to forgive will atrophy, mm. get weaker and weaker and weaker is a Tibetan monk and their focus is compassion. When you feel hatred, you just immediately take your focus off it and put your focus on compassion. Mm. You feel anger, same thing. So mm. what you're doing is you're allowing those, what we would call negative emotions or attitudes to atrophy. Mm -hmm. Uh, whilst at the same time developing the more virtuous attitudes. Mm. Mm. Um, so for the Dalai Lama, and that's it, the, the Dalai Lama and everyone, it, it's about compassion. It doesn't matter how mm. much someone might be in your face abusing you. You mm. all, don't, don't take it on. Always come back with something compassionate or something understanding. Mm. Always. Even... I got this from another teacher. I was told many, 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 many years ago, um, always tell the truth, always, mm. even even if it means your own death. Mm. Um, yeah, that was it. Mm. I don't know what else to tell you, but that's it. So with the Dalai Lama, it's all about being compassionate. When the Dalai Lama isn't uh, doing his, what he's uh, his expected routines of going out and talking to the world and all of the mm -hmm. rest of it. He just sits around. He meditates a lot. He'd probably yeah. go into sleep meditation oh. four, maybe five times a day. Mm. So for him, it's sleeping, eating, laughing, mm -hmm. walking, talking. Sometimes you can't shut him. He's like anyone else. Sometimes you can't <laughs> shut him up, but other yeah. times you can't get a word out of him. I, I spent two two weeks there with him. Did you did you practice with him, uh, like close close to him, or was it just 
once in a while? I would say maybe twice in a day. Oh, yeah. You got to remember, there wasn't just me and him. Where, wherever oh. he goes, uh, 150 to 500 monks just rock up. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's like if um, a really famous movie star was to arrive in Stockholm, you know, yeah, all, yeah. Of, all of the followers of that movie star would all congregate just to get a glimpse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and that, that's kind of the same thing. Mm, mm. you've got to understand that around the Dalai Lama there are mystics who are very down to earth mm. non-religious type people but mm. then again you've got to remember also that there are thousands of religious Buddhists who mm. also follow the Dalai Lama mm. and they will clamber just to touch his gown or just to touch his sandal or mm. you know so that's a religious mentality mm. um and then you've got your uh, your people from overseas, your people who are have got a month's holiday off from their work, <laughs> and they want to go and meet the Dalai Lama and have the Dalai Lama bless them. So you've got That's those me. kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. They'll wait for four days just to bend down and have the Dalai Lama put a, um, a handkerchief. Uh, mm. oh, I forgot what you call them now. The, the cotton thing that they put mm -hmm. over your mm -hmm. neck is a blessing. So, so that, here's, uh, here's the thought I, I was thinking uh, the other day, uh, having a conversation with my friend. Buddha himself wouldn't have wanted Buddhism to be created and worship to be had. That's, that's right. Any, any religious leader, I think, would be extremely upset to come yeah. back and see that their teachings had been turned into a religion. Yeah, because wor worship is not part of it in a way. No. Unfortunate, there are people, and once again, we've been educated this way. There are people that need belief. Mm. That's where religion comes in. Um, they're scared of what they think is evil and good. Mm. What I mean by that is if you take all humanity off of this planet, all people, you take them off of this planet, where would you find good and evil? Yeah. It's I gone. Yeah, yeah. So for those kind of people who believe in that stuff, for those kind of people who need to believe that there is an omnipotent, all-loving creature out there taking care of everything, religion, they need religion. Mm. Uh, and that's unfortunate. However, that's where they are at at this particular mm. time in their evolution. Mm. But you have to really leave religion. Religion has nothing to do with reality whatsoever. Mm. It's purely based on a belief system. Mm. And a belief has nothing to do with fact or reality. We've mm. already gone through this, you and I. Mm. <clears throat> so I forgot what your question was. I'm sorry. No, just about worship and belonging in the... Uh, yeah, it, it seemed like the, the Buddha wouldn't have wanted the, the worship. Um so, this, so this, this, it's it's interesting uh, for me because then the re yeah conflicting because then the, the the Buddhist the religious Buddhist even the high up I don't know <laughs> what to think of them why do they worship do they not I don't know do they not understand or is it just me that I don't know the higher ones yeah like the the religious monks uh, throughout Thailand like I have a lot of them around me right. Um, yeah, what, why do they worship Buddha? They get the wrong idea. They, uh, why do Christians worship Jesus? Yeah. It doesn't mean Jesus didn't exist. It just means, uh, I'm not going to go into that. This is what I yeah, mean yeah. by offending people. Yeah. Um, some monks, many, many monks become a monk because it's a career move. It has nothing to do. A lot mm. of them went in there as four and five year olds, being given away by their mm. family, not mm. because they were special children, not because they mm. were born speaking like an enlightened mm. being. It's because the these people just couldn't afford to keep another child, so they give them yeah. to a monastery. Most of the monks are like that. Mm. They're not mm. there for religious reasons. They're there because. Mm. They're getting paid, they're getting fed, they've got a roof over their head, and they're doing good for their community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, then you have other monks who do realize that enlightenment and the enlightened mind and oneness with the all actually mm. has nothing to do with religion whatsoever. Mm. But they also understand that the lay people around them are happy when they believe in a religion. Mm. Mm. So what do you do in that case? Do you take their happiness away from them because mm. it's based on belief? Or do you yeah. leave with their, their belief and allow them mm. to be happy? Mm. So you have those monks who yeah. they know that it's wrong, they know that it's not real, but they also mm. know that it keeps 100 million people happy in their yeah. country. So they yeah. leave it with that. You, then yeah. you have the ones who they reach enlightenment and they just go off into the mountains and you never see them again. Mm. Yeah. It's a world to itself, the mystical realm. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, there's levels and there's levels. Yeah. It, there's, a, there's a phenomenon called returning to the marketplace and what that mm. means is it's a Zen terminology. Mm. What that means is once you've gone through all of the enlightenment and you've released yourself from the ego and you've risen mm. above it, you realize that you, you get the vision of what's called the void. Mm -hmm. You may have heard of the void. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look out of your window and you look at a tree and you ask yourself outside of this six inch little box that I call a skull, Mm. To the rest of the universe, what's that thing called? You won't get an answer because it's not its not called a tree. Yeah. It, it doesn't have a name. Nothing has a name. We, oh. We're the ones that label everything. So once more, if you look out your window and you don't call that a tree and that a house and that a dog and that a cloud and that's a planet and that's a sun, if you mm. don't put any labels on anything at all, don't allow your brain to start naming stuff, Mm. suddenly life you just see this one big moving entity that we call life mm. and you're a part of it and it looks like what we call trees and things mm. that's what it's made out of once you do that once you stop labeling everything everything before you is now void it's mm. void of name void of mm. labels void of meaning but it's still there mm. You know, you still split your head open if you try and bash your head on a tree. <laughs> it, you just have to understand that it, outside of our human head, it's void. It yeah. doesn't have meaning. It doesn't oh. have names. It doesn't have labels. It's just mm. this living thing. Mm. And, of course, you become one with it at that moment. Mm. I think it can be quite frightening. That's what I've uh, seen in myself and also with others when you start talking about it but what sh should it not believe in anything and uh, like there's there's no reality what like becomes quite um well what we just explained is reality yeah but in there in, in, in there in my own head like there has been another reality for most of my life right and then you just have to let should I not believe in myself my stories my my stuff why would you <laughs> why do you want to well, that's security, I guess. It's uh, comfort and what I recognize. There you go. Yeah, but it's hard to let go of. That's Vipassana. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm, what, what I'm at. It. Why do you need security? That means there's fear in there. That's, that's, right? that's a good question. Why do I need security? Um, Are you fearing death? Oh, yeah. Oh my God, I fear death. Yeah, I would say less now, but definitely that was a big thing for the last uh, few days at the Vipassana. Yeah. Well, you need to die once at least. Yeah. You'll, you'll have no insecurity, and if you have no insecurity, then you um, don't need to believe in anything. Yeah, yeah. Why? I've had so many people, old people, they go, "Oh, you have to believe in something," and my answer is always only if reality scares you. Mm. You need to believe in something. What's wrong with reality? Why would you want to replace truth and reality with a belief? Yeah. What the fuck's that? Yeah, yeah. Well, when you put it like that, but when you have these, uh, like all these things you've grown up with, like, um, I, I like had so many discussions with friends and family around this, uh, and, and they are uh, traditional Swedish, sort of, and I'm maybe not as much. And Four. They have <laughs> yes i made it <laughs> uh but yeah they've some of them call me crazy right and uh 
it's it's interesting to just uh, observe that they they really want to hold on to their stuff, right? Yeah. Well, there's two kinds of truth. Uh, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> there's two kinds of truth, Rasmus. There's relative truth and there is absolute truth. Oh yeah. Your beliefs and all of the things you hold on to tightly to make yourself comfortable, they are relative truths. Yeah. And they're only relative because when you die, they will die with you. Mm. Yeah. Absolute truth is the truth that is there before you were born mm. and after you've died. Mm. Absolute truth. We just spoke about one. The only certainty in life is change. That's one yeah. absolute I truth. Am. Permanence is not true. There's no such thing as permanence. Yeah, Every, yeah. Everything comes and goes. Everything dies. Everything changes. Yeah. Um, so basically what happens there? So your average person is constantly striving for a permanent job, a permanent relationship, a permanent mm. life, mm. permanent income, permanent happiness. Everything they're looking for is permanent mm -hmm. in a universe where change is the only certainty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Can't yeah. be done. You no, see no. what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. So constantly trying to pin down permanence in a universe where change is the only certainty. That is insanity right there. Yeah, if yeah. If you can embrace change and look forward to change and enjoy change, there's 70% yeah. of your world problems gone right there. I mean, even uh, I think it was Abraham Lincoln said, "This too shall pass." Yes, so that's, that's like that's uh, that's the Western framing of the of, of the impermanence uh, yeah. concept, right? Yes. So, yeah, uh, very interesting. All right, uh, I'm gonna let you go. Uh, it's a, a long day, but um, let's do a quick meditation and the 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 one, or you can do whatever you want, I guess. But uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But but the, the one uh, with Chad was uh, fascinating. I feel like it was it was deep one. But but you 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 go ahead and take two three four minutes whatever you need. Um, it'd be nice to do some uh, meditation. Okay, there's a similar one to what I did with Chad. So that's the only one I do. Okay, okay. Then what? So I, I get you into a meditation and then I just leave. No, no, we we we'll finish up and, and talk before we. Okay, so let's just do it for three or four minutes otherwise yeah. it'll just be dead air time yeah 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 would you like me to describe what should be happening yes please all right let's do it you comfortable i would like to point out for your listeners that when it comes to meditation your seating position should just be comfortable mm. you don't have to sit in lotus position that's just turning yourself into a tripod so that if you fall asleep, you don't fall over. That's mm. all that that is for. You can do this in bed. You can do this standing up when you get good at it. Mm. Okay. Close your eyes, please. Take a nice, easy, slow, deep breath, not too much pressure. And as you let your breath out, let everything go. Let your shoulders drop. Let your heart and your lungs and your liver and your kidneys just drop. Let all of your internal organs hang off the inside of your rib cage like wet rags hanging off a clothesline and just relax. And allow that to happen with every exhalation. Every time you breathe out, allow your body to just relax a little bit more and become heavier and heavier and sink into wherever you're sitting. Now, as you sit back in there and note the blackness that you are sitting in, you may see that in that blackness there's movement. Certain shades of blackness, darker or lighter than other shades of blackness, just moving around. You may notice that your brain wants to focus and follow that movement. Don't. Don't try and stop the movement. That's not you. In a practice where you are trying to still yourself, your mind, why would you go in there and try and still things that you are watching when whatever you are in there that's doing the watching is what you are trying to still? 
So while you're sitting in there in the darkness, noticing and being aware of movement in the blackness, don't focus on it, don't follow it, just allow the movements to be there. But you yourself is unmoving. Also in that darkness, for some people, they will see colors coming at them, coming and going. You'll see shapes in the colors and colored shapes coming and going. You may see your mind or your brain trying to shift focus from the movement in the blackness to the movement of the colors and to the shapes. Don't try and stop the movement in the blackness. Don't try and stop the shapes and don't try and stop the colors. The only thing to try and stop is your focus moving from one to the other. That is the movement you are trying to stop. Somewhere in the back there, you will notice some chattering going on. Rasmus will be chattering away somewhere in there in the background. Don't listen to it. Don't focus on it, but do not try and stop it. This is the ultimate aim that every true martial artist is aiming for, which is called stillness in action. So while you're in there being absolutely still, Notice that around you there is chattering, there is thoughts, there is movement in the darkness and movement in the colors. But do not try and stop the colors. Do not try and stop the movement. Do not try and stop the chattering. Whatever you are in there, that subtle, invisible you, deep down in that darkness, whatever you are, just be still and allow all that movement to go on around you. The reason you don't stop your thoughts, the reason you don't stop any of it, any of the movement at all, other than your ability to be still in your watching, is because eventually when you reach and realize ultimate enlightenment in that deep state of mind, you need to be able to sit in that stillness, but still allow your thoughts and your body to be able to interact with the outside world. The reason for that is while your body is at work, while your mind and body is training in the martial arts gym, while ever, whatever it is you're doing in the everyday world, you should be able to sit back where you are now, watch your thoughts and your body interacting but you, deep, deep down in there, is absolutely still, beautiful, untouched, pristine stillness. And when you notice from that position, your thoughts are about to do something wrong or something a little bit awry, you can interject with some spiritual wisdom and stop it. It's a very, very different state of being from someone who goes through life responding and reacting from their thoughts and responding and reacting to and from their emotions. When you unwisely react and respond from emotions and unfettered thoughts, you will end up being a criminal. You will end up doing some very stupid things. But if you can sit there and constantly, consistently engage life from that wonderful, deep stillness that you are approaching right now, you will always have the ability to inject wisdom into your vehicle, the monkey that you inhabit. Now sit back in that darkness just a little deeper, just a little further wonderfully still and just notice what is moving in there around you and note whether or not you the focus are actually being dead still amongst all of that movement now I'm going to leave you there just for the next 30 seconds
Hi. Uh, <laughs> take a moment. Uh, come back. It is so interesting to watch what's going on in the blackness. <laughs> actually, once you once you make your realization, your third eye will actually come outside of your skull, yeah. and you'll start to see all sorts of entities and things that these eyes can't see out here. Mm. But in that blackness, eventually, as you become more and more still, and it, what I would like to point out, if you can hold that stillness in there while all the movement's going on, if you can hold that mm. stillness for one minute, mm. enlightenment will hit you like a truck. Oh, really? <laughs> You've only got to hold it for one minute. You don't have to sit in absolute stillness for years on end. That's bullshit. Mm. Someone else, anyway, that's wrong. Mm. It's not how it is at all. Yeah. It'll just hit you like a truck, absolutely. And suddenly you'll see your thoughts like watching cars going up and down the highway, mm. clear as a bell, crystal clear. You'll see, let's say you have a thought, um, of, I don't know, pen. Uh-huh. You'll see the thought pen will just go past uh-huh. you like it's an object. Mm. And life is just very, 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 very different at that point. Mm. Mm. One more thing I'd like to point out, the mind that you are re-engaging with, that higher mind, that original mind that you are, has all the knowledge of all things that it has ever been in for Mm. billions and billions of years. And once you start to engage life permanently from that higher state of mind, Mm. you have access to the information that that mind has accumulated over billions Mm. of years. And that's um, that's something well worth getting into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. The, the the something the the intuition. I don't know if it's the same thing. It feels like this the same thing. Like the intuition, just letting intuition spont spontaneity let that control more and more. That's that's something I've been learning to deal with, <laughs> and Intu- it turns out to be it's actually better. <laughs> intuition was the voice of the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah when, you, when you're uh, listening to your intuition, you're listening to your spirit. Mm, yeah. The, down, the downside to that is if you're listening to your spirit, then you are being your ego at that moment. Uh, what else is what else is there listening to the spirit? Uh, I guess so. So what should I do then? <laughs> there's no what, this- there's nothing. You just added a wrongness. You just added a negative spin to what I just said. It's just interesting. It's not wrong. There's nothing you should do. Mm. Just notice that if I'm watching spirit, then at this moment, I must be ego. Mm. If I'm watching ego at that moment, you must be spirit. Ah, uh, so many layers. <laughs> no, there's two layers. Oh, really? Okay. I just told you both of them. When you're sitting back watching your thoughts, you have to be spirit at that moment, mm. don't you? If you're sitting back watching your thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like yeah. the, seeing the minutia of, of like, because I, yeah, intuition, I I, I couldn't um, relate those two very easily. I still can't. Intuition is purely the voice of your, your spirit. That is mm. you. Your intuition is the real you crying mm. out to the ego mm. to get it to do something. Mm. get it to do the right thing or make mm. the right turn mm. it's extremely important to listen to it mm. so that's ego listening to spirit and eventually when mm. you when rasmus the ego decides to give in to spirit and allow spirit to become the dominating force mm. you will be listening you will no longer need to listen mm. to your intuition you will become the intuition Ah. And then you will see Rasmus, the ego, listening ah. to you. Ah. Because you, yeah. at that point, are the intuition. You, you had a, a, a segueing a little bit, and we're, we're going to get off soon, but there are so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably do this again at some point. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do it again soon. You had an explanation about the difference between your finger. You had an explanation about the finger you don't think about moving your finger, you just do it because you are your finger. But that's yeah. not the, it's not the same. Can you explain that? I can't remember fully. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I'm sure you can explain it better. This is uh, this has got everything to do with PK. People who want to understand PK, um, psycho. PK. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So if I gotta put this, if I call that a pen, mm -hmm. I've just separated it from me because mm. I've called it a pen and I'm called GM. So we're two separate things. Mm -hmm. Only because of the labels that I've put on them creates the delusion that we're separate. Mm. If I, so you don't think every time you do that, you don't think I am now going to contract the tendons that go into my fingers and I'm going to do this and you and feel for it. You don't have to try and find your finger and then mm. bend it. None of that mm. goes on. You mm. are your, your finger and you do it. If when you stop all of your thought process, you have no thought process of pen, self, or anything when there's no thoughts going on at that moment you are the pen you are the self you are the mover the moving and the moved all at the same time mm. but as soon as you start to think your thought process will break all that up and separate mm. you all so the miracle occurs when you get rid of the delusion mm. delusion of separation yes absolutely mm. So when you move the the pens and the papers and all that, you become one with the the thing. That is such a, such a Bruce Lee statement. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I, I only heard that in the become one, be like water, and all those things. It's uh, my friend. Yeah, yeah. It's like I have this uh, in my vipassana. I had the empty your mind quote, which is like running around in my head throughout the whole uh, retreat and, and like Bruce Lee it was a cool movie star but it was never a big fascination and all that was kind of distant for me when I was growing up but now I started to see I start to see the the depth of those things actually it's interesting have you watched the way of the dragon I think it's the way of the dragon or into the dragon the one on the island where he has to go and get the guy with the claw hand Mr. Hand Man uh, mm, maybe I'm not sure Okay. What we're talking about, there's a moment in one of Bruce Lee's films where he's talking to his master in the monastery and his master made a comment to the effect that he's noticed that Bruce Lee is using his spirituality in his martial arts now. And Bruce Lee said to his master, he goes, yes, <clears throat> what I see is when my opponent contracts, I expand when mm. my when my opponent expands, I contract. And when I see a window, it hits all by itself. Mm. That's what he's talking about there, watching the ego oh. do its thing. And you can just sit back in there and watch it once you've trained <laughs> it. It's like an equestrian horse. Once you've got a good, well-trained equestrian horse, you should never have to put your hands on the reins. Mm. Mm. It knows what to do and it mm. will do it perfectly mm -hmm. all you're going to do is a little bit of pressure with your knees every now and then to guide it mm -hmm. in the right direction mm -hmm. and this is how you should be with yourself with your ego mm -hmm. watch it do what it does have absolute faith in it because you've mm -hmm. trained it yeah 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 and this is it you train your body you train your monkey yeah it's so like this is what i feel like uh both uh, other vipassana i've been to last year and this year uh I felt that my productivity had gone up like ridiculous. I could just do a lot of stuff without any effort, which is mm. funny. Uh, that's not what you would have expected. Not what I not that's not why I went right. Um, but yeah, both times I can just like my productivity just jumps up a few steps. Just like, oh, watch what I'm doing now. I haven't tried and just yeah, happening. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Well, you, you've probably dropped a load of the unnecessary bullshit. That yeah, you yeah, 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 a lot. <laughs> a lot. Takes a lot of energy, buddy. It does, it does. And yeah, you don't realize until you kind of drop it. Because yeah, 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 yeah. that's cool. All right. Uh, I would love to have you on like in a few weeks or a few months again. It's uh, yeah, fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll be in Sweden in the summer probably. So maybe I can stop by if you're still around. Yeah, we're going to have lunch somewhere. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice.
All right. Thank you so much, GM Wolf. Tuck, tuck. But, but by the way, where does the wolf come from? Oh, all sorts of countries. I oh, I see what you mean. Uh. Um, <laughs> When I got ordained, just before I got ordained as a monk in Tibet, oh. um, I was quite annoying. I, I would, <laughs> through my ignorance and arrogance, I would uh, interrupt people in deep meditation. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I was just a naughty child, I guess. Uh. And they had a word for me, which means... Um, he who pokes sleeping dogs. That, mm. that was the name that they gave me. Oh, really? uh, and then someone else said, that's, that's a mouthful. Why don't we just call him Wolf? Um. And when I, when I became ordained, I need to back up just a slight bit here. Yeah. Your name represents who you are right now. Uh. And if you've changed your life, changed who you are, what you are, how you think, and you're going to become a different person, mm. you want to get rid of everything that reminds you of or attaches you to your previous self. Mm. So you get given another name at your ordination. And at my ordination, they said, do you have a name that you would like to take on? And I said, Wolf. So oh. it became, that's what it became. Mm. So, you know, it was just, uh, 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 what's he, the word? He pokes, uh, he pokes the sleeping dogs. <laughs> he pokes sleeping dogs. I still That's do it today. <laughs> a, a naughty one. All right. Well, thank you again. Thank you a lot. It was a fascinating conversation. I could have kept going, um, but I got to, I got to get to sleep. It's almost 12 o'clock here and uh, you got to get oh, going. Wow. What is it yeah. here? Five, six o'clock here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Tak. Tak. Tak så mycket. And uh, I will send over all the links and everything uh, as it gets done. And I uh, hope to speak to you soon again. All right. Thank you. Take care, my friend. I'll see yeah, you, you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right.